The most dangerous monsters you'll face in the Wizard's Tower will be the Mega Boss Monsters. There are six of these creatures, but as you can see, they have different shapes than the standard tokens. This means that if you were to put them in the bag, you'd be able to feel what they were, so to get around that, we deal with Harbinger Tokens. For each monster, there's one triangle-shaped Harbinger Token. At the beginning of the game, after you've put your starting monsters on the board, flip over all six Harbinger Tokens, shuffle them up, choose three at random to be added to the bag of monsters, the other three are set aside and not used during the game. When you draw one of the Harbinger Tokens, the token itself is actually discarded, and you'll replace it with the actual monster token for the monster it represents. The monster is placed by a typical die roll in the forest with its largest points facing the castle as usual, then you'll have to deal with that individual monster. They all have a special effect and certain abilities, which are summarized on these cards on the back of the teaser cards. We'll go over those now. One important thing to note about the Mega Boss monsters is that they are immune to boulders, or in the case of the dragon, the trebuchet, since he's a flying monster. These guys are all smart enough to get out of the way. The first one we'll talk about will be the Basilisk. When he's drawn, all the players have to discard down to a hand of two cards, and as long as the Basilisk remains alive, players have to skip step two of their turn, discarding and drawing cards. That means you'll have to fight the Basilisk without any new wizard cards. When the Chimera is drawn, he's placed on the board and he immediately breathes fire. That means he'll light the castle on fire. After that, whenever he moves, his movement is a little bit different. Instead of going straight towards the castle, he rotates one space counterclockwise, one space towards the castle, then breathes fire again, lighting more and more of the castle. When he eventually reaches the inside of the castle, he defaults to regular movement, one space clockwise like every other monster, and he no longer breathes fire, essentially behaving like a regular monster once he reaches the castle. It wouldn't be a castle game without a fire-breathing flying dragon. So, this five-point monster, when he hits the board, also breathes fire, which will light the castle on fire. He's a flying monster, which means he's immune to knights and swordsmen, as well as boulders, tar, drive him back. And also, his movement is completely random based on a die roll. On the chart here, on the reference sheet, you'll see oh, results of one to six. When it's time to move the monsters, a die is rolled, the number that you get is the resulting effect the dragon will have. In this case, no movement, but he would breathe fire again, lighting things up. The dragon can move clockwise, counterclockwise, forwards, even backwards, and as you saw, not move at all. Very hard to predict and very dangerous because he always breathes fire. The Hydra arrives on the board and has movement like a regular monster, one space towards the castle at a time. The difference with the Hydra is, for every point of damage taken, two imps will spawn in the forest directly behind the Hydra. Now that doesn't apply to the very last point of damage. When the Hydra is at one and he's hit, he's slain and does not spawn any additional imps. This also applies if you use the Barbarian or another Slay card. The Hydra will simply disappear without spawning imps. That's your best bet when fighting this one. The Necromancer, as his name implies, brings dead monsters back into the game. When he's placed on the board, the players will go through the discard pile of monsters that have been discarded, drawing two monsters. Keep in mind this is only monsters, not monster effect tokens. Two monsters are drawn at randomly and put back into the monster bag. You'll have to face them again later. The Necromancer moves like a regular monster, one space forward at a time. The difference is in how he dies. When he's at the castle, when he hits a castle structure, whether a wall or a tower, he immediately perishes. All the points he had remaining in health are how many monsters are pulled back from the discard pile and put back into the bag. So if he died at full health, that would be four monsters going back into the draw pile. The Warlock causes players to lose magic cards. When he's placed on the board, all players must discard one wizard card. Also, the Warlock is immune to magical attacks. Wizard cards cannot be used against him, so you'll have to use the castle deck. Also, his movement is based on teleportation. He'll always move one space forward, but he'll end up in whatever arc you get by die roll. So when it's time for monsters to move, in this case, because I rolled a six, he moves into the archer ring, but ends up in six. That's how his movement works, all the way up until he breaches the walls and enters the castle ring. If that happens, his movement is regular clockwise, just like all the other monsters in the game.